In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a set of Corsa and upgrade it from looking like this to this. And I'll show you how to do it from the beginning, step by step. Now these are all the steps and mods we'll be using to set a set of Corsa up like I have it. And you'll see that each step has its own chapter at the bottom of your screen. So if you've done any of these already, then you can just skip to whichever step you need. We'll start by showing you how to install a set of Corsa, then how to install the mods you need. Then I'll show you how to customize all of the weather and lighting in game, and then finally how to customize your camera angles. But now let's start from the beginning and install a set of Corsa. So first up, you'll obviously need the PC version of a set of Corsa. Now you'll need to get it through Steam, and it does go on sale often, so go ahead and purchase it and install it on your PC. Now once that's done, I want you to quickly do something here which makes things easy for you in the future, and that's bookmark your set of Corsa game folder. To do this, simply right click on a set of Corsa in your Steam library, go to Manage, and then click Browse Local Files. This will then open your Assetto Corsa game folder. Now go back one folder by clicking Common at the top of the screen here, then right click on the Assetto Corsa folder and click Pin to Quick Access. You'll see the Assetto Corsa folder now has a shortcut on the left side of your Explorer screen here, which you can click to easily access it, which helps us later on. And that's our first step complete. So now let's start installing all of our mods, and all of the download links for each step in this guide will be in the description below in the same order that I explain them so that it's nice and easy for you. Now to get the same results that I have, I'm going to recommend that you get the paid version of each of these mods that I show you today, and that's basically because some of the functions will be missing from these mods if you get the free versions instead, and I just want you to be able to copy exactly what I did here and get the same results in your game. And you'll see the cost for each mod on your screen now in US dollars so that you know how much you'll need. So now we'll be installing our first mod called Content Manager, and this is basically just a custom launcher for Assetto Corsa, which allows us to run the game with all of our mods. So first we purchase the paid version of Content Manager for $2 US. Click the link in the description to go directly to the download page. Once you've purchased it, you'll then receive an email with a download link for the app. Click the link and then click the red download button. Now just below that you'll see a product or download key, just copy that or leave it to the side because we'll need that in a second. Now once Content Manager is downloaded, simply extract the folder by right clicking it and then clicking Extract All. Once the folder is extracted, open it and this app called Content Manager is what we want. This is our new launcher and it's how we'll open a set of Corsa from now on. And when you put this file is up to you, I just put it on my desktop. Now let's open Content Manager and we'll get this first time setup window. There's not much you need to do here as it should all be automatic. Content Manager should automatically detect your Assetto Corsa folder location as well as your Steam ID. Simply choose whatever you want your name to be in the app and then all of these items below that we don't need so just click OK down the bottom. Then finally we just use that product key we received in the email earlier and we do this by clicking switch to full version at the top of the screen. Then just paste that product key into the box and click OK. You'll get a confirmation message on your screen and that's Content Manager installed. Next we'll install the custom shaders patch or CSP, and this mod basically transforms a set of Corsa with improved graphics, performance and physics capabilities. Now to get it we head to the creators Patreon page, and the membership to access the content here costs $1 US. What you can do though if you're on a budget is simply pay for the membership, download the version we need, and then cancel your membership so that it becomes just a one time fee. Now there is a brand new version 3.0 which is fine if you want to use it, however it's still got some bugs as it's an early access version, so if you click on my link in the description, it'll take you directly to the one that I use which is version 2.12. Now click the link to download the file, then once it's downloaded, to install the mod simply take the folder and drag it into your content manager window. You'll then see the green hamburger menu at the top light up, click this and then click install at the bottom of the menu. Once it's installed, close Content Manager and reopen it. Now CSP is installed and there's nothing else you need to do here. Simply click the settings in the top right. Then in the About and Update section, you should see that version 2.12 Preview is selected and grayed out, and this means it's been installed. Now we'll install Pure, and this mod provides the game with extra weather effects such as rain and snow, as well as light and color customization options. Now again, we head to the Creator's Patreon page, and it's the same process here as with CSP. Membership costs about $1 US, and you can download what you need and then cancel your membership to make it a one-time purchase. Now just like CSP, there's a new version 3 that's just been released which is fine to use, but if you want to use the same version that I do, then again click the link in the description and it'll take you directly to version 2.57. Now in the post for version 2.57, we scroll down until we see the link for the pure 2.57 high res. Both of these links are the same, just on different websites, pick whichever one you like. 
You'll then be taken to the download page for the file. Simply click the green download button and wait for the download to complete. Then once it's downloaded, again we extract the pure folder by right clicking it and then clicking extract all. Then once that's done, we go into the new folder, then click on pure 2.57. Now all we care about is these four folders here, apps, content, extension and system. Now make this window smaller and put it to the side. Then open up a new explorer window and this is why I told you to bookmark your Assetto Corsa folder earlier. In this new window, click that bookmark to open your Assetto Corsa folder. Now installing Pure here is really easy and all we have to do is select these four folders and then just drag them into your Assetto Corsa folder just in the open space at the bottom. All the files will move over into exactly where they need to go and now Pure has been installed. And now we'll install our final mod and this is our post processing filter and what this does is it alters the color settings in game to make the visuals look even better than the default. Now there's so many of these filters available online made by different people, but the one we'll be using today is the Exilite Realism Filter. Now this filter not only gives you really impressive colors that look amazing, but it's probably one of the easiest ones to use because it's all done through a single app in game, which I'll show you soon, but first let's install it. So again, we head over to the creator's Patreon page and this mod as you saw earlier is the priciest one on the list at about $7.50 US. Now the reason for this is because we're going to get that middle tier membership because it'll give us access to a pack that comes with all of the settings pre-made for us which makes everything super easy and pretty much plug and play. But again remember you can just download what you need here and then cancel your membership straight after so it's just a one-time purchase. Now the first thing we download is the graphics pack version 4 and again just click the link in the description and it'll take you directly to it. Now click the download link and once it's downloaded we do the same thing as before and extract the folder by right clicking on it and then clicking extract all. Once it's extracted we go into the new folder and you'll see that everything is ordered neatly into steps and we only need folders 2, 3 and 4 here. Folder 1 or step 1 we don't need because it just tells us to install CSP and Pure which we've already done. Folder 5 is optional and just changes your chase camera and I'll explain this one later on in the video. Folder 6 is no longer needed anymore and Folder 7 again is optional and unrelated to this tutorial and I'll explain it in another video. Now this is all very simple drag and drop again so let's start with Folder 2. Now click into it and then bring the window to the side. Then get your Assetto Corsa folder up again and simply select these two folders extension and system. Then just like we did with Pure drag them into the Assetto Corsa folder down the bottom and that will install the files. Now let's go to folder 3 which is our pre-made video settings. So there's three options here and which one you pick depends on your PC hardware and what kind of graphics card you have. Now I'm using an RTX 3080 in this video and I can use the ultra settings without any issues. But my advice to you if you're not sure is just use the high settings and see how the game performs. Then you can use the medium or ultra settings afterwards once you've tested it depending on how it handled the high settings. Now to load these settings all we need to do is double click on the icon of the option we want. Now this is completely safe so just click open. The website will then ask you for permission to open Content Manager, click Open. Content Manager will then open and ask you what you want to do with these graphic settings. Click Apply and Save and those settings will automatically be loaded for you. Now we go back into our final folder number 4 which is our CSP settings and it's the same process here. Double click the same option that you chose for the previous folder so I'm choosing Ultra, click Open. The website will ask your permission to open Content Manager again, click Open. Then just like before, click apply and save. Now there's just one more thing left to do and that's download the latest version of the filter which is version 1.08. So we go back into the creator's Patreon page and again click the link in the description to go directly to it. Then click the download link at the bottom. Once it's downloaded, same as before, just extract the folder. Then go into the new folder and just drag the extension and system folders into your Assetto Corsa folder. It'll ask you if you want to replace some files. Click the replace all files option at the top. Now go into Content Manager, click Settings in the top right, then click Assetto Corsa, click Video, and then in the right side of the menu under Post Processing, click the Filter drop down menu and select Exilite Realism 1.08. Then finally while you're here, select the game resolution and FPS that you want to run it at using the drop down menu on the left side of the screen. And that's it guys, you've just installed all of the mods you need to make a set of course to look extremely modern and now you're ready to hit in game and start enjoying it. Now let's start a session and test everything out by clicking drive in the top right, then choose whatever car and track you like, then just make sure that the weather drop down menu is set to pure and all you have to do is mouse over it and click away and it'll select it. Then click go in the bottom right. 
Now once we're in, everything should already be set up and you'll probably see that everything looks a lot nicer than what the regular Seto Corsa does with all these really impressive reflections. Now we'll click drive to get into the car and just to make sure you've got the same color settings as me, just move your mouse to the right side of the screen and this will open up your apps menu. Now there shouldn't be many here, but the one we want is the red one called Pure PP. Now click that and it'll open up the app that I mentioned earlier. Now this app gives us all the settings we need to customize the color in game, but all we're doing for now is just clicking on the color tab, then make sure Exilite Punch is the color grade selected and this is the overall best looking option for the majority of lighting and weather conditions. I'll explain the other options briefly later in the video. Now once you've done this, everything will be set up just like I have it, and now I'm going to show you how to use the Pure Planner app to customize the weather and lighting in your game. So again, we move our mouse to the right side of the screen, and this time we click on the blue Pure Planner app. Now this will open a little planner box, and this is a completely open app where you can change the weather and time of day at literally any time during a session. Like you could be driving and then open this up whilst driving and change the weather and time if you wanted to. Now to change the weather, we just click on this little cloud icon in the middle here, and this will open up a smaller menu with some basic weather presets, and we can have anything here from a clear day to overcast and rain or even snow. Now to set the time of day, all we need to do is click on this slider on the left side of the box and just drag it up or down and the time will change as you drag it. And you can see exactly what time you set it to with a time display just above the bar. And that's the basics of how to set the time and weather using the Pure app. But we can go even further than this and really fine tune our rain conditions and I'll show you how to do that now. So let's say I want my session to have some rain, but I don't want it to be too cloudy and I want to be able to see the sun's light shining on the car. Now in our Pure Planner app in the weather presets section, I'll choose a preset like few clouds. Then you'll see at the top of the app a tab named data and we click on this. Now in this menu, you'll see all of the rain values and the ones that we care about are the rain amount, rain wetness and rain water. Now uncheck the box next to rain amount to unlock all the options. Now as we increase this rain amount value, you'll see the rain effects and the raindrops on the car increase. However, the road still looks very dry and that's where the next two options come in. Once we've set the rain amount to how we want it, we then start to increase this rain wetness bar. And you'll see that as we increase it, the road will become visually wetter and wetter to the point where it even looks like it's a mirror. Now I don't want it to be that drastic, so I drop the value down to about 3%. Then finally, we can set the amount of actual water and puddles on the road with this rain water option. And you'll see that as we increase this value, puddles visibly start to form on the track. Now with the air temperature bar, make sure you don't set this too low, like 3 degrees or lower, otherwise the rain will turn into snow, unless you want snow of course. So now I'm happy with my rain conditions, but I want the scene to be brighter and with less clouds. And all I do now is just change the time of day to something like 6pm and there you have it. Bright conditions with nice reflections on the car, but also really nice reflections and lighting on the road thanks to the rain. And now I'll show you a quick tip to get your colours looking a bit deeper. Now in this scene things look really good, but if you want to get a deeper or darker ambient in the image, then we can use our filter app to change the gamma preset. Now to do this, open the PP filter app again, then click on the tone mapping tab. You'll see there's three options here, and by default the Exilite option is selected. But now if we change this to Uchimura at the bottom, you'll see that as I click it, the image becomes darker in many parts of the screen, and this gives it a different kind of feel, which is more on the cinematic side of things. Now this is of course all personal preference, so if you prefer the original option, then just leave it there. But the option to change it is here if you want it. Now there's one more option that we saw earlier, and that's the color grading section. And if we go back to that menu, basically each of these options give the image a completely different color scheme that can drastically change the mood of the image. Now I won't go into these in this video because it's more of an advanced topic, but feel free to play around with these, especially if you're a content creator or you want to do some kind of photography or filmmaking in the game. Just remember that the Exilite Punch option is the default filter that looks good in most lighting and weather conditions. Now I've got one last tip for you to help you improve your experience further, which is the camera angle customization. Now if you're someone who likes to drive in cockpit mode, the graphics preset we loaded will have the cockpit cam change to this dynamic moving camera that moves as you turn the wheel, which personally I don't really like. Now don't worry, you can turn this off and all you need to do is go to the content manager and click settings in the top right, then click custom shaders patch, then on the left side go to neck effects, then at the top of this menu just uncheck the active box under extension. Now you'll have just the regular cockpit mode with the stationary camera. Now if you're someone who likes to drive with chase cam, then you also have a few options here. If you prefer that classic chase camera angle that you see in other games like Gran Turismo or Forza, then you don't have to do anything as the game's chase camera is like that by default. 
but if you're looking for a more dynamic or arcade chase style camera that reacts to your brake and throttle inputs like in games such as Need for Speed, then back in that Exilite graphics pack folder we used earlier, you'll see folder 5 which contains these custom chase cameras. Go into the folder and you'll see these two folders here, Dynacam Low FOV and Dynacam High FOV. Whichever one you want to use is up to you, I always use the Low FOV version. Now just like before, all you need to do is click on the folder you want, then just drag it into your Seto Corsa folder and that'll install your new chase camera. Then go into the custom shaders patch settings menu and click the chaser camera option. Then open the script drop down menu and choose the same Dynacam option on that menu. Now guys, that's everything you need to get out there and start enjoying your new refreshed Assetto Corsa. And honestly, just try everything, go wild because it's such a fun experience. There's so many more cool tools and mods that you can use like drone cams and traffic maps. We don't even have to race, you can just sit there and drive in traffic. It's a huge world honestly, and I'll have plenty more guides coming to take you through it all. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to get notified when these videos publish. Now if you get stuck at all or you have any questions, then please just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.